Welcome to KMNH, Kids Making the News Happen. Hi, I'm Malcolm, and thanks for tuning in to KMNH, Kids Making the News Happen. January 18th is Martin Luther King Jr. National Holiday, and it also marks the 26th anniversary of the National Day of Service that celebrates Martin Luther King's life and legacy. This holiday encourages all Americans to volunteer to improve their communities. It's a day to volunteer and help one another. This year, Happens Teen Hall program will be also giving back. Over the last eight months, Happens Teens have been developing and designing a message that is meant to remind everyone of the type of neighborhood Northside is. It's a communication project called Northside No. As we say no to homophobia, sexism, racism, injustice, hate, ableism, and violence. By saying no to any of these, you are really saying yes to a neighborhood filled with love and acceptance for all. So on January 18th, Happen will be distributing posters to businesses on Hamilton Avenue for free. We hope that wherever you go at Northside, you are reminded of why Northside is so special. If you would like a Northside No poster for your home, office, or business, just contact us in the comments below or send us a message. And if you are in 45223, we will deliver your poster. It's what our Happen Teens do. Our teen hall motto is to have fun and make a difference. And we thought this would be a great way to celebrate Dr. Martin Luther King Day and the National Day of Service. This KMNH segment was sponsored by Pat and John Agnew. Thank you for your support. Northside Business District windows are being decorated with love for Valentine's Day. The project is uh, Northside Windows to the Heart. And we are hopefully involving the Northside businesses, all of the Northside businesses on Hamilton Avenue. Um, we're hoping that they will decorate their windows for Valentine's Day. The project is organized by the Northside Business Association Events Committee is another way to bring some fun and beautification to the business district during the upcoming holiday. It's a day to celebrate love and friendship and admiration and uh, it's celebrated in various countries and it's just a nice time to spread a lot of love and, and joy. Many Northside businesses decorated their windows for the Christmas holidays during the Light Up Northside event. The windows are going to look phenomenal, which they actually did for the holiday season. And with all the creative storefronts that were on display then, it should be no time before Northside is filled with all kinds of hearts by February 14th. We would like to thank Gerard Finke for supporting this broadcast of Kids Making the News Happen. Okay, enough is enough. A wild manatee in a Florida river was found with the word Trump written on its side, and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service is not happy. We can only imagine that the manatee is not happy either. The manatee was not physically hurt by the etching because the word was scratched into the algae on its body, but I cannot imagine the amount of mental anguish that was caused by this act of vandalism. The Endangered Species Act prohibits the public from coming into contact with the manatees whose slow-moving nature had made them vulnerable to fishing nets and motorboat engines and now political graffiti. We would like to thank Tim Jeckering for supporting this broadcast of Kids Making the News Happen. Researchers at a Russian company called Planta is working with scientists from the United Kingdom to create glowing plants as long as the plant is alive. By adding certain parts of DNA from glowing mushrooms to a tobacco plant, these scientists were able to create plants that could make their own glow. They believe many people would want a glowing plant for their beauty and wonderful lights. Planta is working with a company called Light Bio to help the glowing plant sell. On Tuesday, December 30th, the Wisconsin Badgers won the Duke's Mayo Bowl college football bowl game played at the Bank of USA Arena in Charlottesville. But while celebrating the victory, tragedy struck. 
the trophy shattered. The culprit, freshman and starting quarterback Graham Mertz, who threw over 130 yards and zero interceptions, certainly leading to their 42-28 victory over the Wake Forest Demon Deacons. Did you know that air pollution kills 7 million people a year? This according to NationalGeographic.com. And new studies out this week said that dirty air makes COVID-19 even more deadly. If you have a history of breathing and small particles of pollution, you have a higher chance of dying from COVID-19. The particles over time weaken your immune system, adding to the risk of severe COVID symptoms. But the good news is that COVID shutdowns have proven to be good for the environment. The air is cleaner all around the world because people are staying home and not traveling. So when you need to take a break and get some fresh air, it might actually be cleaner air now. This KMNH segment was sponsored by Pat and John Agnew. Thank you for your support. Don't expect the weather to be very different over the next 10 days. Highs remain in the mid-30s and lows overnight will stay in the high 20s. There's a slight chance for snow on Tuesday morning and there's a chance for a rain and snow mix on Wednesday when temperatures will be at their highest around 39 degrees. Next weekend will be dry and cold but don't let that stop you from getting outside. Just remember to bundle up and keep wearing your mask. A popular pet food company, Sport Mix, is recalling their dog food after 28 dogs have died and another 8 are sick after eating dog food with high levels of aflatoxin, produced by a type of mold that grows on corn and other grains that are used in dog and other pet foods. The FDA is investigating these reports and is warning pet owners and veterinarians that some Sport Mix products may contain fatal levels of aflatoxin. Receiving a letter from someone is special, but getting a letter from your pen pal 66 years after it was sent is even more special. A UK man got a postcard from his pen pal six decades after it was sent to him from his American pen pal when he was just nine years old. The letter had a Grand Central Station marking and a vintage airmail stamp on it as well, but somehow the letter ended up in a charity shop as part of a stamp collection fundraising program. A volunteer at the shop decided to track down the recipient of the postcard on Facebook and connected with 75-year-old Chris Harmon, who was very surprised to receive the letter from his pen pal and family friend Fred Kendall of New Jersey. The two remained pen pals for years after the postcard was sent, but how the postcard ended up undelivered for so long remains a mystery. A three-minute video explaining the scientific concept of quantum tunneling in a brief and easy-to-understand way has earned a 17-year-old the grand prize at a Breakthrough Junior Challenge. According to AtlantaBlackStar.com, the contest encourages students to present creative videos explaining complex ideas in a way that makes them easy for the general public to understand. Her name is Miriam Seagay, and her video, filled with animations, diagrams, quick cuts, and funny one-liners, was selected from more than 56,000 student entries from around the world and explains the complex concept of quantum tunneling. If you don't know what quantum tunneling is, don't worry, neither did I. But when you watch the video, you will learn that it's all about what an atom is made of and how those subatomic particles move and even go through walls. Miriam learned about her win during a live video from Khan Academy founder Sal Khan and astronaut Scott Kelly will receive a $250,000 scholarship and a $100,000 science lab for her school and a $50,000 prize for her teacher. Her dream is to have a career in research and communication and she has proved that she knows how to tell a great story in science. Check her video out on YouTube at the Breakthrough Junior Challenge. Kids Making the News Happen was made possible in part by the support of Marley Montgomery. Thank you. Scientists from the University of New South Wales wanted to try an experiment on farmers' cows by painting eyes on their rear ends to see if it scares off predators. Researchers worked with over 2,000 cows on 14 different farms and tested their idea in a four-year study. 683 cows had eyes painted on their rear ends and none were killed in those four years. 
You probably heard of having eyes in the back of your head. Well, with these cows, it pays to have eyes on their you-know-what. This Came and H segment was sponsored by Cynthia Buddick. Thank you for your support. Thank you for watching Kids Make the News Happen. Have a great weekend. Tune in next week for more Came and H.